If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile, you'll get their unlimited plan for 50% off. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash save. That's mintmobile.com slash save. Hurry. Offer ends January 15th. ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hey, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Ben Holderness. We host the Holderness Family Podcast every Tuesday. You may know us from the silly videos that we make online. Or a book about marriage called Everybody Fights. Or as winners of season 33 of The Amazing Race. Still can't believe that happened. Listen, we do a lot of stuff, but our podcast is our most favorite thing. Yeah, because every week we get to sit down face-to-face, talk to each other about marriage, family, mental health, or just anything that we want to know more about. Sometimes we have expert interviews, sometimes it's just us, but our goal is to bring some joy and laughter into your your life every week. Our other goal is that maybe you will learn something as well. Right. So search the Holderness Family Podcast and check out our most recent episodes. We have one about staying organized with creators of the Home Edit. And one about being diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. We hope you'll join us. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com. Hi, it's Dave here. You're listening to a special bonus edition of The Cinemile without Kathy because she wanted nothing to do with this. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I would have been interested to see what she had to say on the subject matter. <laughs> well, I would have as well. Yeah. I actually said, come along, have a few laughs. Uh, but she, for it? She said no. no. Uh, straight up no. Um, <laughs> so we're in the pub. <laughs> we are here. We're in a Well, let's, let's face it. First thing I'm going to introduce you. This is my friend Tom. Hello, yes. He does know video games. Uh, to some degree. Or as he plays them. <laughs> I mean, but look. I'm familiar with these video games of Richard. Cards, cards on the table. We're, we're just, we're, we play games. We're not, if you're here, if you're expecting some sort of we're too in-depth old to industry be gamers. analysis. No, we're not. Are I, we? Well, oh no! Actually, I'll get to that. But no, yeah, like we've got a whole thing on that. We've got the finger on the pulse, like like I feel like we used to. Yeah, ten, what is a Fortnite? Ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more about this can Fortnite. You, can you tell me what that is. <laughs> um, but we basically what you're going to get in this episode, and it'll be interesting to hear if any of you are interested in this because mm, we sure. don't know. This is a, yeah. um, I think I've m- uh, sporadically mentioned gaming on the Cinemile, um, and any time I do, Kathy just sort of give vacant expression <laughs> comes out. over her face yeah. you can't see it because it's a podcast but she kind of just does a sort of a, a half eye roll and like uh, does the sort of spinny helicopter I love this audio sh- describe stuff that's shut up <laughs> what, what, uh, yeah that's basically what that is um, but it's the end of the year it's the end of the decade it is the end of the uh, decade and it's a um, nice time to reflect on the pop culture that we can absolutely see. what a decade it's been <laughs> well, well we're, not, we're not talking about the decade because the title of this is Best Games 2019. <laughs> okay, Slow okay. down, Tom. All right. Did you read the brief that I didn't write? <laughs> yeah. The brief? There's, there was a brief. Um, right. What you're going to hear on this mm-hmm. podcast is me and Tom are going to get... Well, we're just going to a quick look back over the year that was in gaming. Yes, indeed. Then we're going to give you each of our top five games of the year. Brackets. Not the mm. best five games that were released this year because... Personally speaking, I'm so far behind on I video games. I don't have games. time. Yeah. I don't have There's the time, no time to play right? them. They come out faster than I've got 30 hours to pump into into a game. I just can't keep up. Same. Uh, so I'm basically, most of my list is from 2017 or 18. <laughs> as far back as 17. Mine are 18, oh, yeah. 19. Yeah, I got yeah, some sure. 2017 gems Ooh, on here. Looking forward to this. Oh, yeah. Um, Good year. 
I got a couple of 2019 games, but yeah, my back catalogue is stacking up, stacking up high. Um, but we will also cover off some of the games we didn't get to play, what yes. would have liked to play. So you're going to get some rampant speculation about what those fun <laughs> games must be like. <laughs> it sounds like a fun episode it's already, quite right? quite the industry insight everyone was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let, let's crack on. Um, 2019 in gaming, How, what, what was it for you? What does yeah. it mean for you? Uh, well, I think the thing... In, in my life, personally, I've got to the point now where I don't have time to play games like I used to, which means I've got to be a lot more subjective about the games that I'm choosing, because if I'm going to invest you know, 30, 50 hours into something, it's got to be good. Um, so I've become a lot more like the, the AAA games and the games that are meant to be the big thing. I'm much more interested in those than I was like all of the indie games and things like that. So it's separating the wheat from the chaff and trying to put uh, put your money on the right horse, so to speak. Yeah. I don't know if you feel the same. Like I, mean, I feel, you're still playing games from 2017. I feel, yeah, I'm stuck in the past. I feel exactly the same. I mean, I it's 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 this horrible um, un, un, injustice that as a, as a as a kid um, yeah, and even as a teenager, you have just so much time, infinity it, time, right? Yeah. Months of you, summer holidays. And, and, and your work day ends at three. Yeah, yeah and then a <laughs> bit of homework, and then, hey, what will I do? Fact. Maybe I'll play games for eight hours. <laughs> um, you, I would spend yeah. entire summers just sitting down, cracking through game after game after game. Yeah, I had and replays as well. You'd complete it, and then you'd go back oh, yeah, and finish it. Okay. Because you only had so many games. Because you couldn't mm. can afford to buy games. Which is a whole thing as well, because they cost money. Exactly. And now, that being an adult, who knew? Who knew? Now the injustice <laughs> is, I could buy all the games I want. I own all the consoles. Um, I have... Oh, I have dozens of games of I haven't even played. This is <laughs> this is me bragging. I'm living the dream life that I, as a teenager, w- fantasized about, and I don't have ten minutes a day. To time play any of these time games. was that I was living literally a minute away from where I worked. I would go home at lunch and play video games. Fourteen-year-old oh. me was, would have been losing his mind. But hey, time is different. You've got to, You've got to be more savvy with your time, which is a whole thing. But that said, uh, the average gamer is. <laughs> well, the average game is playing about six hours of games. Uh, oh, you got stats? I got so many stats. Let me talk you through my fun facts. Oh, you, <laughs> you came Pedro prepared. Fun facts. <laughs> hey, did, did you make uh, an infographic? Well, I would say this is... they work really well on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk you through my graph. Um, <laughs> I would say this isn't my first radio, but it is my first radio, which is why I've got overprepared. <laughs> good. So many years. It's your first radio? It was <laughs> good. I yeah. did enjoy it. Um, average gamer is playing six hours of games a week, but the average gamer is that means doesn't mean what it used to, where it's like it, that could be anything from kids or people playing casually on their phones or uh, people like people like ourselves. Yeah, that's for, that's that's uh, a sixteen-year-old cracking forty hours of Fortnite a week versus yeah, it's going to skew the average an hour a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly right. that. But that said, the average age of a gamer is about yeah. thirty-five to thirty-eight. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, are indeed. these UK stats or global? So these are um, mostly US. based on the US, right. but um, some of these are, are UK and sort of sort of global. It's difficult to get the origins of stats when you're looking at these things. I, I feel like there'd, there'd be a fair amount of There's crossover, a lot of crossover between the UK yeah, and the US. And what stats I have been able to find have said that they're similar in the places that matter, so I think it's fair to say yeah. that this. That's me. I'm 35. You, I'm the average uh, gamer. I play six hours a week. As I you. wish. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to make up yeah. those other five hours. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> um... Yeah, so it's interesting on that point of sport, actually. Um, it reminds me of something that they're saying that millennial gamers now s- spend more time watching other people play video games than they spend watching live sports. So this, this is Twitch, right? Well, yeah, things, yeah. Or Twitch. YouTube gaming or whatever. Yeah, or uh, YouTube has got a lot to answer. In fact, yeah. um, last year alone, 50 billion hours of video content that was consumed by viewers was uh, people playing video games. 50 billion hours. And I'd love to say that I can turn that into some sort of tangible time for you, but the nearest thing I've got is 500... Uh, no, 5,700 millennia... <laughs> That is consumed is back back. In, in a year. This is one of those stats where you put a, a things back to back, and it's like a ten yeah. football fields. It's exactly that. You just can't fathom it. I can't. What well, I can't get enough time to play video games. I, I don't understand how people are watching them. Kind of getting to the point where people are spending more time watching them than playing them, and I think some of that's got to do with the cost. Yeah, well, it's there's personalities involved, right? That's the, also is it nin? Look, I, this is not a field I really understand or. Um, no, I'm out of my uh, follow there as well, same. for sure. But, th- yeah. but I do know what has cut through to my sphere are the celebrity gaming. Mm-hmm. Like, and I've never watched these guys, but I, I read that uh, Ninja, I think, is the most popular online streamer in the world. 
um, and he was one of the top 10 highest paid athletes in the US for esports in, in 2019 no 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 athletes <laughs> in all of sports oh, so if you include goodness. esports in sports yeah, so he earned uh, he's in the same league as LeBron James oh my God. or um, I don't know <laughs> don't know anything about sports. Sports. He's the only one that calls them sport. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, these guys are competing, and and the um the winner of the Fortnite World Championship, the first um, of which I think was held this year. Mm. Um, I don't know what it was called exactly, but they did a World Cup of Fortnite, and it was a thirteen or fourteen year old, uh, maybe 15, 16 from the UK who won it, um, and he won what? He won millions. Like he he got a, a big jackpot. Um, these guys are, you know, these guys are becoming global phenomenon superstars. Yes. They're also wielding, they're influencers. Absolutely. There, there was the Absolutely. guy, the Hearthstone guy, who um, this year, um, who spoke out against the Hong Kong um, police and mm. the, the riots that are going on. So, very highly charged political issue, um, to which Blizzard, the company, um, blocked his account or banned it. I do and, and, and this, so yes. Then boycott started around Blizzard. The Its own employees started getting involved. Like, these guys are playing on a global scale in terms of... Um, they're, they're influencing young people's um, politics, personalities. Yeah, yeah, they, no, they're, they're celebrities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's something... It's got to the point where I think it's been fun to be like, oh, you know, esports and, like, YouTubers and influencers and all of this. Is like, can't be ignored at this point. It's huge. <laughs> it's yeah. massive. It's not going anywhere. It's huge, but it's also, like... It still feels to me like a subculture, still even though, just because we're not in, some, in it. And yeah, exactly that. Exactly. But it's not. You said yeah. fifty billion yeah, hours. Fifty billion dude, hours. Like it cannot what? be ignored. But <laughs> I am. I think I'm just. Maybe, maybe we're too old. Maybe, maybe I'm out of touch. No, it is the children who are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Will we crack on with our top five games of 2019? Yes, indeed. Um, Dave, I really think you should start. Well, I, I will gonna I'm, I'm take so, that invite. So I'm taking it up. You want to hear my my game. number five game <laughs> Absolutely. of 20, 2019. So I got to say, all right, before, all right, lists are kind of a silly exercise. <laughs> they're arbitrary. Right? They're very arbitrary. <laughs> they're very subjective. Mm. This isn't me saying that uh, the number four game is better than the number five game. And, and I know for a fact some of these games most, like, some of these games, the way I've ordered them, people are going to say, well, that game is not as better than that game. <laughs> and, and people nitpick this stuff all the time. However, the way I've done this is these are my favourite five games that I played in 2019, yeah. according to my own tastes, mm-hmm. and the ones that I got the most enjoyment from. Not necessarily this is better than that, because also, like we've said, these are yeah. vastly different genres. It's kind of hard to even oh, compare. Yeah, Some I'm of this sure. is apples that, I mean, and pears. To that point, it's a, it's a list of your top five favourite games. It's yeah. not like the best games. We're not saying anything about that. So Just your faves. Uh, feel free to tweet us uh, mm-hmm. at the cinema aisle and say, Dave, you're crazy or whatever, but ultimately, <laughs> this is my list. Um, <laughs> the world needs so. now is more people tweeting about what video games they <laughs> do and don't like. <laughs> That's all we need. Uh, why don't we just bring up The Last Jedi and just, <laughs> just really <laughs> open, open the can Absolutely. of worms. Um, the fifth <laughs> best game that I played this year is actually from 2019. It was at the very beginning. Stop. I'm on top of things. Okay. Finger on the pulse. Finger on- <laughs> it was the remake of Resident Evil 2. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I love... Resident Evil 2. Mm-hmm. Um, I never owned a PlayStation. I was a Nintendo guy. Okay. So now, well. I, now, as I mentioned, <laughs> I I own them all because I've I have disposable income and no time. Uh, so I'm just like, console oh, fluid. I need that and yeah. that. Console <laughs> fluid. I like that. Um, so I uh, so I had the choice to play this on whatever platform I like. I chose uh, Xbox One for some reason. Choose I don't know why. Your platform. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I, I loved this game when it was released. I played the N64 version. Um, there was Way an N64 when. mod of Resident Evil 2, Damn. which um, was a pretty okay port of the game from PlayStation. Um, Can't us for more than pretty that. Pretty okay. Pretty okay is um, a big deal. But I love this. I think this was the first, my proper first experience with a horror video game as yes. a teenager. Um, and it's my hands down my favourite genre of um, video game is it's horror horror video games horror video games for it really good but specifically horror sci-fi is that that uh, Venn diagram uh, for me yes. horror sci-fi video games I'm talking Dead Space yep. 
is amazing. Um, Alien Isolation, I loved. What games do so well when it comes to horror is that they draw you in because you're already in, in that you're, you are physically controlling whatever character it is that's moving through this world. Exactly. Like, you don't have the whole, like, oh, you know, splitting up's a bad idea because you're the one who's choosing to make these decisions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you see the corridor and you think, no, I don't really want to go down that, like, that's on you. you You've made it. the bad choice. You're invested. Yeah. <laughs> You've the one who said, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Stay here. <laughs> but you're right. That's You get a... Because I love horror as a, as a movie genre as well, and what you get with video game horror is you... The, 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 every, the thrills and the, the scares are more... You feel them more. Yes. They're more personal. So you've caused you've caused yourself to be in this situation. Yeah, and yeah. you're. Uh, but you're also the the. Um, it's the dogs jumping through the window. It's the jump scares are more frightening because there's there's consequence for you yes. as a player because you you might die and have to yeah. do it all again. Yes. That's, yeah. that, it's, it's basically <laughs> that's the consequences. It's amazing of how video games essentially hold you. <laughs> Hostage with the idea that if you mess up, you're going to have to play it more. Yeah, <laughs> which, that, which that is works. insane when you that think works. about and it. And if anything, the edges have been taken off gaming lately because you've got quick saves and the, the, the threat has been reduced. Yes, like um, losing an entire level and starting back from the beginning makes the the feeling of getting it wrong even more yes. profound like yeah, you're yeah. more focused on your and that's an investment because you've invested some time into that like if you yeah. then have that taken away from you you have to do it again it's got stake yeah there's something at stake um, but anyway re- the Resident Evil 2 remake was um, I think the, if movies if movies now are in a state where they're remaking movies from 20-30 years ago and nostalgia's been mined incessantly the gaming industry is sort of doing a similar thing, but doing it in a way where you're like, guys, you, you've just took something from the past, you've picked it up, polished it, made yes. it like as if it was just released today, mm-hmm. while retaining everything that was great about it. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. They made a brand new game that's exactly the same game that I played 20 years ago. There's, there's a lot of games that have been doing this, especially a uh, thing that comes to mind was, I think, um, well, I was a few years old now, but um, when the latest in the Mass Effect series, big beloved series that started from way back when, I'm going to say like maybe 2006-ish, um, the tech wasn't there to make the game that they wanted. They brought out a game which was um, sort of a reimagining of the series called Mass Effect Andromeda. It was mixed reviews, but what they demonstrated was that this was the game that they wanted to make like 10 years prior mm. they, that we are at the point with the tech now is where before where things were drawbacks they just aren't there anymore because the tech has caught up and people are being able to directors are being able to deliver on what it is exactly that they wanted to achieve but that's, that's exactly the, right because the way that tech progresses in the gaming world is at a rate where it's, it's exponential it's Moore's law isn't it it's like everything exactly. grows within 6 months everything is twice as powerful as it was previously yeah, when, when you look yeah. at the where we are now with gaming compared to where we are like in our childhood yes. it's like it's it's entirely different whereas movies are largely the same it's just slight iterations well yeah you look at the the Marvel Cinematic Universe it's like the graphics it's not like the graphics are the <laughs> anything's particularly different the, the fact that the movies at the beginning can stand up against the movies currently yeah show that tech wise it's like well you know we're kind of in a good place with it yeah it's, it's kind and of there's a complacency that's peaking. set in in some ways yeah I think yeah Anyway, that's me. That's my number five. Okay, your number five. Um, oh no, sorry. One, one last thing I gotta one say. One more thing. I never bloody finished that game because the. <laughs> Too uh, scary. No, I, 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 I like scares. But what happened was that bloody Mr. X character uh, <laughs> came out and he, he follows you around constantly. Mm. I don't know if you played it. I have not played um, it. It's good. I was meant to say like I've, I've not played any of the Res games. Oh, ever. Ever. Oh well, th- jump in at that one. It's good. Okay. Um, but. This this dude just follows you around like nonstop. So mm. for the first half of the game, he doesn't show up, and you kind of just get to explore and tip around it. And I like to sort of peek around corners and really try and scare myself. But you can't do that when there's this fucker just like you hear him coming like his footsteps. It's the alien from <laughs> Alien Isolation, and uh, I just had to turn it off because I got really frustrated. <laughs> but it's it's nonetheless a great gaming achievement. All right. What's your number five? Uh, let me see. So I think I should probably... <laughs> Some of these are a bit of a cheat. But 
I, can, so. I can say this because it was released on the Switch recently, despite it actually being a game from 2015. I don't care. It's whatever you played this year. It is The Witcher 3. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's such an amazing game. Yes, um, and the fact that it, uh, it's it got the, the Witcher returning in the series now on Netflix with Henry Cavill, it's like it's a franchise that's actually been taken very seriously. People are worrying that maybe it's too seriously as a series of the right thing for it. That's all looking good, that's great. And I can see exactly for why after playing the game they've built a world that is so good and so done, um, so uh, Game of Thronesy y that um, th- that's, it's, it's, it's proved to be incredibly popular. Um, the fantasy stuff, is great uh, and the story that they've crafted in that is really nice I didn't know where I stood with it for the first maybe six hours of it which, which is a lot of time to invest with the game and being like I don't know yet think about that imagine doing that with a series being like well I don't know how I feel about that series yeah, I don't know I don't like, know if it can I've capture that video game I've watched the first six episodes and I'm still not sold and oh is it out? It through. no 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 sorry Saying if you were to if you'd watch a series, oh right, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like I'm out I mean. by the first. If I'm watching a series, I'm probably out by maybe the first couple of episodes. Yeah. Whereas if I'm, I'm playing a game and I'm six hours into something, <laughs> yeah, you tend to give job. it a bit more chance. Yeah, exactly. I uh, played that a few years ago mm. when um, when it was out on whatever the the PS4 back in 2015. Whatever I, 2015, <laughs> yes, specifically, um, and I loved it I think it's one of my favourite games of all time it's particularly good like the whole the, all of it's um, all of it a lot of it's conversation based where you, yeah. you choose the, the story that you actually end up with um, and the witch has been really good at making very big real world consequences to this because you think like it's just an, a, a trivial and arbitrary tree of conversation that you make your way through as you're doing the dialogue and you're choosing what responses that you give uh, it's easy to think that they've not actually made a game that is in any way going to reflect your choices Back in The Witcher 2, the choices that you made were so uh, consequential that the second half of the game, um, the map itself changed as to what you would then be playing on. Oh, it, was, it was that big in that real world. And changes like that are still there in The Witcher, in the Witcher 3. What I really enjoyed about The Witcher uh, 3 was... Because you, you, get, you get similar um, sort of conversation paths and NPC missions and that in a lot of these kind of games. You mentioned Mass Effect and yes, you've got, um, yeah. which is great as well, but Fallout and all these things. Mm-hmm. But what The Witcher does better than any of them is this small, the people felt real. Yes. The people felt like um, their, their missions weren't just fetch quests or inconsequential things to just fill your time until you get to a main quest. No, con- they were was the written t- out. Yeah. They were, they were very well um, thought out, structured, and had been injected with enough like emotional like depth and pathos mm-hmm. that you react to what you're, you're what you're doing and the consequences of what it you're makes doing. you think about the decisions that you make further down the line. Yeah, as well. I think it's, it starts very early on where small decisions that you make can have bigger consequences further down the road. Like even people that you pass by that might otherwise, if you never met them, they might have no influence on the story at all. But then when you do meet them, it's just like, well, actually, this is going to start to derail things for you on the on the path that you thought that you had. Yeah. Um, it really it really immerses you in that world when you know that actions have consequences, which so many of these games don't do. Yeah, or the consequences feel very, like, uh, on rails yes. or trivial. Exactly. Yeah. And I think Mass Effect 3 is highly criticised in that regard for that kind of stuff. For sure. Um, right, my, my next one, my number four game that I played this year is from 2017 I think this was <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey oh my goodness okay. <laughs> right that's a long time ago that is a deep cut is that right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this game <laughs> my, you my all remember this is game Pokemon Yellow <laughs> 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 if, I, if it was a list of games that were released this year I'd have two um, I, I bought a Switch this year um, and I just well, went straight no, in. You can play The Witcher 3. <laughs> Did you? Well, I've done that. Um, <laughs> been there, done that. But um, first thing I bought was Super Mario Odyssey um, because it came with the game <laughs> or with the console. So when the, you say uh, bought. Yeah, <laughs> it was bundled. But my God, um, I haven't played a Mario game in quite a while. I think mm. Sunshine on the GameCube might have been my name. last one. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was, oh my God, right back in there with this. <laughs> I forgot how just joyous these games can be. Um, this is how you know I feel like I'm just constantly shitting on Hollywood in this but <laughs> I'm going to do it again um, that's a that's an industry which is obsessed with nostalgia yes um, I wish they would just look 
to Nintendo as a shining beacon of how to how to mine someone's <laughs> nostalgia while while iterating and innovating constantly keeping a franchise alive for as yeah, long as they have they have yeah. made the same bloody game they've made, <laughs> made, 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 made they basically made like five games they made Mario Zelda Metroid as uh, Smash Brothers Mario Kart like yep. they've got and they're all like subdivisions of those genres they've got very few actual IPs mm. but they've released what 20, 30 titles in each over the, yeah, the lifespan exactly. of their not company. a year goes by that there's not another Mario no. or Pokemon game, for that but, matter. What, but you never get... They're never bad. No, they're, no. And they sell. They, they sell, sell big time. But they should sell because they are... They're, they're innovating and doing incredibly new things and pushing boundaries while staying exactly the same and being <laughs> familiar. And that's what we're just not getting with Hollywood or they're just not yeah. getting it right it's true to what you like in a new way yes exactly so you feel like you're doing something different while feeling comfortable because it's the same sound effects and the same Mario and this game in particular felt like a celebration of everything that had come before so you get a lot of the 2D um, uh, elements and gameplay which is innovative but also celebratory of the, mm-hmm. the 8-bit era I, it I loved it. Sounds like from the people that I've spoken to who have played it, the almost like the uh, the skyfall of the series, <laughs> in that all of the yeah, homages yeah, yeah. in it were like good and respectable callbacks to everything. It was done in a very tasteful way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I never expected that analogy. Yeah, I mean, but, nor did I. But, but yes. <laughs> also, Adele did the whole sound. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just her singing. Do 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 do. <laughs> Good. And on that note, yes. What's your fourth best game of um, 2019 or or in the past? Um, so I'll probably throw in, and it's probably it, I tell you what. If it's on your list, then it doesn't count. Spider Man. Oh, okay. It's not on my list because I didn't play it this year. I actually did play that last year. Really good. Like a really, really, very tight game. It was made by Insomniac. In, it was made by Insomniac Games, who were responsible for the Ratchet and Clank series. So these kind of like arcade, really snappy and really like quick and pacey and just good, fun, tight gameplay. Um, they absolutely smash them with something like Spider-Man, which is beloved within the, in the Sony world because of uh, was it? I can't remember which Spider-Man it was that was out on the PlayStation Two. It was probably rated up there as being one of the was the, the Spider-Man Two. It was one of the best movie tie-ins. Yeah, it was yeah, really, that was really good, really good. Yeah. Um, and for them to come up with this, there was good like throwbacks to that. And we're at this rare point where the kind of like Disney Sony Marvel crossover allowed this game to happen because you you play in this place when you've got like um, Stark Towers in there and you've got um, nods to the Jessica Jones and the Doctor Strange and all of that uh, for them to have been able to be so uncompromising with the world that they've made uh, like we probably won't get an opportunity like that with any of those franchises again I guess we'll see uh, well, you got that Avengers game oh, coming out next cool. year, which looks kind of horrible. Yeah. <laughs> There's a really uncanny valley <laughs> yeah, where yeah, all yeah. these characters that they're not the characters <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I like, but this wasn't the Spider-Man we knew either. But no. they, he looked a bit bland as a as a person. But he, the voice acting was quite mm, rich, was really tight, really good, and and the story w- it was very strong. Like yeah. they did their own story, um, kind of made a lot of bold choices yeah. with. Um, Harry and Norman Osborn mm-hmm. um, and wove in a lot like a lot of the characters I felt like they'd learned a lot from the Batman Arkham games but also didn't really feel too much like those games you know what it was really refreshing about it is it felt like a, a tangible game and that is to say that for something that was open world and you can go anywhere do anything and there's loads of quests for you to do it had an end you could conceivably complete everything yeah. which I feel like so many games today don't where it's just like oh it's infinite stuff this game will never end you switch off after about 12 hours because like I can't get anywhere near the end of this they managed to make it all manageable it's like everything that you had to do within it um, either had some sort of purpose had some sort of motive felt like worthy of doing yeah um, and because it, it pushed the narrative along exactly yeah. exactly that and certainly like where games are of this model where um, if you want to advance in the main story you're going to have to do a whole bunch of side stuff Whereas in this, I kind of wanted to do the side stuff just to see what the side stuff was about. Like, I That's exactly. To up and do stuff. You've you've summed it up perfectly because mm. I'm not a side guy. <laughs> I know I don't <laughs> do the, the side piece. Don't do the side quests. <laughs> Partly back to the original point of like don't have time. 
Yeah. And I and I'm a com- I'm, I'm not a completionist because I don't complete 100. percent But I want a complete story. Yes. I'm na- I'm a narrative completionist, and to me that's when I'm finished the game. Mm-hmm. And normally I don't fuck about with side quests because I'm just like yeah, I gotta come on let's just get on with it I need to find out what happens to Harry and Norman or whatever um, but with this I'm with you I got roped right into the side quests because they were fun they yeah. were really fun yeah yeah exactly as soon as you're given a time trial to do something ordinarily yeah. I'd be like oh, I don't have time for this but it's like no I can shave two seconds off this I'm gonna go do it <laughs> yeah much better than like something like Assassin's Creed a franchise I'm not really a fan of yeah but I, I mean the last game of theirs that I played was the Origins um, game and it was similarly hugely expansive, but it was just so so infinitely unending in terms of its side quests and things that you could do. You just had no desire to do any of them, which is what this did particularly well. But they also felt just inconsequential and tedious, yeah, I found. very much. Yeah. And I've heard similar about the um, Odyssey game that came out last year where it's sort of like... Uh, that was the Egyptian one, was it? No, no, no. The, um, the Odyssey last year was a Greek one. And uh, a lot of the quests were sort of very similar. It's kind of very samey, yeah. and it's like you know everything's a carbon copy of itself. Where you go do the fetch the thing, go to the, go to the place and do the thing, which is a format for a lot of games. So I don't want to slam that too much, but that's, you can make it interesting and you can not make it interesting, and that's something that it struggled to do. That Spider Man didn't, which is why I was, despite being told to go to a place and deal with something, I was always on board, whatever it was. I but wanted to do maybe it. Maybe it helps as well because you get to swing through the city to it get there, yeah. which is great fun. Yeah, it just especially is. when it tells you, like, you've got to get here now, and you know that there's no time limit, but you still go as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, good. Um, with you. My third favourite game that I played this year was from 2017. <laughs> it's just, it's good, just blast good year for games. Uh, <laughs> it really was a good year for games. Mm. This is... Zelda Breath of the Wild so oh. I finally caught up on this, this oh, beauty yes. Um, yes. have you played it? I have not as someone who doesn't have a Switch this is the one game that I'm really quite livid that I've missed out on yeah get a Switch <laughs> seriously I, it's my favourite little toy right now and hey Nintendo if you're looking to sponsor anyone <laughs> <laughs> come come see me um, I have an I, I'm, look I'm only 10 hours into this thing I'm having to scratch the surface um, so I cannot speak to it as a whole but as a game you know back to my point on how Nintendo the make, nostalgia thing yeah, 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 yeah. this just feels like a Zelda game while feeling like not a Zelda game mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. they've done an, they just it's an open world Zelda and it really is open world you know the conventions of Zelda have always been um, you do this dungeon, you get that thing, and that helps you unlock this bit, and then you go to that dungeon. It's a sort of a Metroid thing. Yes. Um, but this is almost intimidating and a bit scary to have been, like, the leash has been taken off. Yeah, I'm sure it's kind of unfamiliar territory. If well, it been, is. I'm like, I don't... To... Where do I go, game? Um, <laughs> <laughs> tell me what to do now. Help. I don't, I, so, help. <laughs> so I've never played a Zelda game where I've had to consult YouTube so much. Because I, I also get frustrated easily if I don't know what to do I or or I've just Dave is responsible trained. for at least one billion hours of <laughs> possibly <laughs> the I get um, I don't know if, if I've been trained by video games which kind of do hold our hands these days yeah. quite a lot or um, or if I just have no patience but this game is kind of uncompromising and or it, it's it's refreshing in it in the way it doesn't really explain how to do the game <laughs> Like, it doesn't tell you how to cook recipes. <laughs> you have to figure that shit out for yourself. You know, that is interesting that you say that, because I find, like, a measure for games these days in terms of how good they are is that if I find myself in a puzzle, I will try and complete it without looking at anything. Yeah. And the satisfaction for not looking it up and doing it is huge. But, but games go in one of two ways now, where either it's so impossibly hard that you're going to have to search the deep depths of the internet for the one person who did it, or they're so incredibly easy. It's like, pull the lever in the room, and it's one of them is lit up. It's like, well, I guess it's that one then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you kind of you kind of want you want a balance. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't me. This isn't me. I because I'm with you. I don't like searching for the answers to things I like to be challenged by a game but this was I was searching the fundamental gameplay mechanics <laughs> of this that is worth as knowing in, yeah. so, so as in like you normally get nowadays you get a tutorial as yes. like you do this with this and this is how you do it you X get, and Y you get 20 minutes of press X to jump yeah <laughs> but they do it in a very innovative ways these days but the 
this Breath of the Wild does, doesn't really ever tell you. It kind of just guides you a little bit and allows you to play and explore. But I didn't really have time for that. So any of the big stuff that like you have to figure out, I'll crack into and mm-hmm. give it a go. But like, if it turns out, I just need to know like what menu items do I have to press to get this apple and this fish in the fucking pot so <laughs> I can no cook the minimum recipe, amount man. to enjoy this game <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to actually play it that's enough <laughs> that's all I need but anyway it's a stunning beautiful it's a beautiful looking game it looks like an anime yeah. it um, is it feels infinite I know it isn't but it just feels vast it um, you can ride horses it's beautiful it's quirky and weird and Japanese it's everything that Zelda and Nintendo should be and yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it that's great well, especially when it comes to um, like open world games at the moment where they are always so open and so sprawling it's like mm, actually if you've got a huge open landscape you're going to have to need to put enough in that that's going to make me interested to explore the things that are in it Yes, just because it's huge and it's there isn't enough to make me want to do it in fact it, if anything quite often it makes me think oh really so it depend- can be intimidating yeah, right? yeah exactly, yeah, too, exactly too, that. if it's too big it puts you off mm-hmm. and I feel like um I got that way with Red Dead 2, which I haven't gone back to, um, because... We'll talk. You've got that coming up. <laughs> right, all right. We're all coming. What's, Spoilers. What's next on yours? <laughs> um, I would actually like to throw in there, and it's had so, like so much DLC and stuff coming into it, that um, I feel like it's fair to say that this can go on a list for last year. <laughs> the, last, the last year. That's the, it's fair to say that this can go on a list for 2019. Destiny 2. Oh, okay. I haven't yeah. played Destiny 2. I played Destiny 1 a lot. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, my understanding is, and I never... Re- well, I, to be fair, I did play through the core game because I think it was a free download at some point. Um, loved that. Then got the Forsaken expansion, which I think was last year. And there's been more expansions this year as well. And it's completely reframed the game into something that is now vastly playable despite having all of the tropes of things that are... Uh, vastly playable. Vastly playable. What was it before? Well, it was not vastly playable. <laughs> it was linear, It was quite linearly playable. And if you were playing it by yourself, uh, pointless game, really annoying, you'd hate it. Whereas now they refine so many of the core mechanics in it, it means that you kind of want to keep going back to it even if there's not all that much to do. Okay. Um, so what's drawing you back in the gameplay? Yeah, very much the the gameplay and the, the types of quests and the things that they've set up. It's, it's, it's an MMO for, for all intents and purposes. It's massive online community. You play it mostly co-op if you can find um, if you can find anyone to play it with, which is the real challenge of growing up, I've found. <laughs> there are yeah, less you're, people you're, to you're, tag <laughs> in. <laughs> your friends aren't as willing to play uh, yeah. online games with you as you, they were. Your wingmen are not there like they used to be. Um <laughs> But to be able to, like, explore this world... I, hey, let's talk about the satisfaction of any video game that gives you a ship that is your ship and you can go to different planets with it. Yes, please. Can't explain why that's satisfying. Sign me so good. Up. Yeah, that's what I want. That's all I want. That's why I love the Mass Effect. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'll go on the minimap and look. Yeah. Just roll, roll the ship around because it's mine and I own it and I have a crew. And then you get thing. to walk around your ship and look at the engines Ideal. and talk to your... There's, career, your there's less wandering around in, um, in Destiny, but... Okay. Uh, if you can find some people who sort of share the experiences and, and Bungie, because they're from the Halo series and the, they know about world building and they know about like well, good crafted story, uh, what they've delivered with um, Forsaken is the real spectacle that you expect of a AAA game. When you know you walk out into a landscape and you're like, oh my god, this is this is beautiful and devastating and like wild and feral in a way that you don't really necessarily get so much now in terms of the level of variety that you can cram into one game. Right. Every planet that you go to, there's something else that's happened or there's something new to see. Uh, and every time you step out, it's like, oh my god, this is this is gorgeous and I want to know about the lore and I want to know uh, who all these people are within it and how they've ended up here and, and all of these things. And it's a little bit light on that, but that's kind of where the, the intrigue comes in is that you know that you have feelings associated with the planets and the places that you go to, um, which is a call to kind of like revisit and especially as it's a shared experience if you're doing it co-op. That's great. That's huge. And, but are there NPCs in, in, in that world? And you talk about story, because I remember Destiny 1 being very gameplay heavy and very story light, which isn't necessarily a criticism because the gameplay was incredible. Yeah, I, I would agree that it does... When you, when you boil down to what the story consists of, the overarching story is actually very... Um, the overarching story is very uh, limited in what it's offering. So it's not it's not... It doesn't offer depth, but what it does offer is really tight. Everything that you're going to do, because the gameplay, it has to be. Where it's like, you've got gameplay that's that good. 
um, when someone says go to a planet because X Y Z is happening, and it's like okay, that's fascinating. You might not see all that much of it in terms of what your characters are doing; they're reacting to it. But certainly, you see that in the way the world shapes itself around you. If that makes sense. Okay, so the context of the that they provide you and the landscape fills in the gaps in your imagination absolutely right. if anything leaving something to the imagination is half of what this is about because it knows that if you're on a co-op you're not really paying attention to the cutscenes you're talking to your mate being like hey did you see what happened five <laughs> minutes ago that was hilarious <laughs> right. um, and it, it does very well to sort of like steer you enough on the path where you can kind of put the pieces together but um, never leaves you in the dark whilst giving you the time to just enjoy the romp that is cruising around this galaxy and saving the world and all the usual sci-fi stuff that you come to expect yeah. Okay, all right. Now, tempted. Right, you've talked me around. <laughs> um, my number two game this year is also on the Nintendo Switch, <laughs> uh, but it's a PC game called Slay the Spire. I know nothing about this. This right. is a completely left-field thing to me. Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> Talk me through it. And you, the audience. Um, so this did come out this year, so I'm on the money here. Stop. Uh, this is a... If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile, you'll get their unlimited plan for 50% off. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash save. That's mintmobile.com slash save. Hurry. Offer ends January 15th. It's a one of those roguelike games. Uh, so it's a dungeon explorer where it's different every time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also a card game. So it's a turn-based card game. Gwent. Where it's a lot, I loved Gwent. <laughs> Another you know, there was a Gwent standalone there game, was a Gwent standalone which I also game. have. Um, a Gwent is a is a Witcher thing. It's, <laughs> it's Gwent's have, great, arguably more popular than the Witcher. I spent some. I say a large portion of my time playing the Witcher was just playing Gwent. <laughs> it's surprisingly deep, but um, that's why this ranks so high. And back to my original comments, I'm not saying that Slay the Sp- Spire is a better game than Breath of the Wild because it's not really fair. <laughs> Um, because one of them is a vastly superior <laughs> accomplishment For sure. in many ways. But Slay the Spire is a very um, it's a small, um, it's a small uh, simple graphics game with just very tight gameplay mm-hmm. that is repetitive. And you'll find this with this game and my, my number one of the year. It's, they're the kind of games that you can jump in and play 10 minutes of or and step step aside yes. and and because I'm so time poor I appreciate that. That's such a big deal. Such a big deal about being having any game that you can like dip in and out of is worth significantly more yes. than the total playtime of a game. Even though ironically you end up sometimes probably, probably spending more. Yeah, yeah. 2 hours plus mm. at this thing. Yeah. So it, it but you've but you've a choice. It's a bit like um a Netflix binge versus a Netflix movie. Yes. You, you'll spend the same amount of time watching uh, a series as you would watching The Irishman, but The Irishman is intimidatingly yeah. <laughs> long. <laughs> yeah, so for sure, the amount of times that I've sat down to watch something, and I've watched maybe uh, f- six episodes of 20-minute things, but I'm unprepared to yes. sit down and watch one movie. What's that about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a psychology thing, because mm. you feel like you can check out. You've got you've got these exit points yes. every now and then. I can quit any time yeah. I want. <laughs> so there's rounds. There's rounds in Slay the Spire. I know I could just do two rounds, or I could do 15 rounds. Um, but effectively, I'm a sucker for uh, card games. Um, I got really suckered into Hearthstone a few years ago mm. and slipped right back into that awful habit this year again. It's quite a hole it's, to fall into. It's powerfully addictive. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, Hearthstone is a World of Warcraft card game which you can get on your phone, uh, which is really what got me. Yeah. Um, and it's very, very good. So this is effectively that. It's like... Um, uh, it's turn-based combat. You play one of three characters who, who is climbing a spire, a dungeon. There's a boss at the top. It's very simple. You choose your path. You pick up uh, rewards along the way. You build up your card deck as you go. Yes. It's different every time. Um, but it's very simple but surprisingly deep and complex. Um, 
and very addictive. I and I love this kind of game. Anything that has this card place, um, anything that has this card based gameplay, is immediately starting to make you think in a more tactical manner. Whereas yes. so many games now yeah. where it's just like you react to whatever's in front of you, whereas this is like, okay, this is your deck, these are your options, and you need to know, you need to anticipate what's likely to happen and what isn't um, in order for you to actually play in a way that's going to get you through it. Yeah, exactly right. And I think that's what I like so much about it. I like, I think turn-based strategy is one of my favorite genres because you can take that step back and pause and consider things and look at your options yes. and then strategize. And I find that very satisfying. Yes, when it pays off, when that comes in and yeah, catching like, that is I so good. I did that and yeah. I made those those thoughts because I'm a very slow thinker, I think, <laughs> sometimes. As much as, I mean, I like reactive games as well and action games, but I get I get more satisfaction from, from that. The strategy. It's, a, it's the general versus the soldier. Yeah, oh, could I'm the general. You're the general. Oh, thanks. You're the, you're the G. High, this is the, high o, the OG. All right, Tom, what's next? Um, I would probably have to stick on their, uh, the latest Modern Warfare, the reimagining of the series oh, from, um, from way back when. Yeah. yeah. So earlier in the year, uh, PlayStation brought out the Modern Warfare. With, they make a game free to play if you're one of the online people. If, Playing well, one of the online well, people. One of the online people. <laughs> Are you an online I am, person? I'm an online person. <laughs> I'm familiar with the internet. Uh, if you subscribe to the PlayStation Network, which enables you to play online, then they'll give you a free game oh, every yeah, yeah, month. Yeah. And one month it was the remastered version of Modern Warfare, which really whet the appetite for Modern Warfare, which was uh, reimagined and released this year, um, which is kind of a reboot of the series. All of the characters from the storyline, which people care vaguely about, um, or in it? Don't care. No, definitely. Loved, definitely loved that game. Absolutely. Do fine. not care about no, whatever interested. the guy with the mutton chops was. <laughs> <laughs> um, pri- price, probably. Oh, I don't know. Probably some sort of noun. <laughs> Usually, that's how it works, isn't it? Those games are just like the stories are just boring. Tom oh, Clancy novels brought to life. I, well, to be fair, Modern Warfare Two had a lot going for it back in the day. That was that was out there. That was when the Russians invaded in America. But oh wait, was that one, the one in the airport where you played yeah, as the undercover no guy? Oh the god, okay, no yeah, 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 very yeah, controversial. Was, they were, they were pretty cutting hardcore. edge back in the day, yeah. and then they started trying to make a point of anyway. They got they got a bit yeah. too political after that. But anyway, they've um, reimagined it, sort of rebooted the franchise. Uh, and it's just very addictive. It's exactly where you left off. Like you, you get back into it, and like you, you're playing this kind of Twitch gameplay, and like it's not too futuristic that it's like insane and bothersome, and it's not all about the cosmetic nonsense that used to happen in it. It's much more about your ability to be able to <laughs> essentially kill go another, into the game, kill another being. human being. Yeah. Watch the light die in their eyes. <laughs> but but there is something incredibly satisfying. I've, I haven't uh, really played done online gaming in uh, many years. But I was big into it for a long time. And there is nothing quite <laughs> like um, conquering some some poor guy you've just like you've just spotted with a sniper rifle yeah. and he's halfway around the world and you know it's a real person you yes. have defeated. Because uh, that, that, there's a com- conquest to it. Well, yeah, there is. Certainly. There's there's something. We're a competitive species. Uh, that's, that's why I think sports this is why, yeah, so I would file, yeah. file it under the sport. This is a game that you play for sport. Like when I go on, it will be me and whatever mates I am able to rally. And a lot of them have rallied for this because this is such a hark back to so the nostalgia thing. Mm. Um, a hark back to that that we all go online, we all play, um, and all have the lols however good or bad that we do because you have the lols we have the lols all the lols we've got the internet it's got the lols you're sounding older by the second <laughs> I just need to preface everything with the word the um, yeah go online you can play similarly you dip in for like 10 minutes and play one game or you can play for like a 2 hour session or whatever um, and there's just so much fun to be had in it so it is, it is addictive I get that um, but I knew that going in because I played the previous ones. Well, it's the, it's the leveling up system that gets you, right? Exactly. You just want you just want that like a uh, camouflage scope yeah, or whatever I, it is. Yeah, need, needlessly going for <laughs> different spray paints for the guns. Recently, I, was, I found myself doing it. So like, I don't I don't know why, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> Gotta I'm have something. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's something. There's some like if you if you dig deep into why um, why we do those things, there's there's a whole interesting piece about the psychology of of humanity, but also there's a it's that sort of empty consumerist uh, mindset that we all have in Western culture. That, like these game companies, have just geniusely mined, um, <laughs> mind the way we behave you for know, their benefit. What? But we're but we're willing participants because yeah. it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> just amazing. like shopping. It's essentially uh, everything has adopted the Candy Crush model. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Instant gratification. Yeah, 
It's the endorphin. The endorphin yeah. rush. <laughs> it's just yeah. enough. Just want to shoot some stranger in the head and then uh, get on with my put life. Put a new mod. In my <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, my number one game that I played this year is also a turn-based strategy game. Okay. Uh, which was ported to Nintendo Switch very recently. It's not Sid Meier's Civilization VI, is it? Uh, no, I, uh, it's not. That was um, a close contender for my top But that five. I have not played that, uh, but I would like to. Um, it's a game called Into the Breach, which I only heard of uh, a few months ago. Um and it's such a terrible title for a game. You've really thrown me for a loop with <laughs> your you hipster on, games. Got you on the top two completely there. Completely left yeah. field. Did you ever play FTL Faster Than Light? Oh, oh, probably, or at least I've witnessed that played at some point. Some part of my memory is is itching at this well, point. It, it's by the same developers as right. that. Uh, that was a game from, I think, 2012 mm-hmm. on PC, which I was obsessed with for many years. Um and it's essentially a spaceship simulator, but very simple 16-bit graphics. Okay. And it's a management sim. So you're managing the spaceship, so, so you've got to manage uh, how much power is in your engines <laughs> versus your phasers. It's just like living Star Trek. I was Trek. about to say that you're... So you're Kirk, but no, you're not Kirk. No, you're... You're the COO of the Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, the guy, <laughs> you're the guy doing all the pouring, pouring paperwork. You, but you get to uh, control Kirk because you have a crew okay. and you tell the crew what to do. So if a fire breaks out uh, in the storage I'm just room, imagining The Sims. That is all I'm imagining. The, it is The Sims. It's The Sims, but in, on a spaceship. Um, and it's you your life... You can take out of the swimming pool. It's, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> that's just torturing those people and murdering them was so it, bad why, just swim, why, swim yourself to death we just let that happen Sim. that was the thing <laughs> um, anyway we not, watched not that we stood <laughs> we by were we are now two games removed from the one I started on um, <laughs> back to the one one step back FTL is a brilliant game yes um, which, and it was uh, just two guys developed it fine from uh, they were called subset games they made it on a kickstarter they wanted 10 grand, they got 200 grand. Damn. Uh, it was one of the very earliest examples of successful video game launches via Kickstarter. Um, big success story, amazing game. Highly recommend everyone play that. Um, and it's on iPad now as well. Uh, so they ported it to iPad in the last year or two. That, that haven't played it, but I would imagine it works as well because it's a very simple interface with again very deep mechanics and it's insanely repetitive not, not, not repetitive um, replayable great um, these guys so these guys this was their second game and it took them what, six years last year it came out it took them six years to release the second game and right. it's they have a lot of money behind them now but they've it just feels like as simple as 18 bit uh, six, sorry 16 bit uh, simple gameplay that is endlessly repetitive or re- replayable and it's but it's very different. It's called Into the Breach. It's um, nominally, they don't give you a story really, but it's nominally set in the future uh, where humanity has been wiped out by essentially kaiju, uh, so giant Japanese monsters. I hate it when that happens. And guess what? You play no. uh, You play in mechs, giant mechs. Oh. Uh, so it's essentially Pacific, Pacific Rim. <laughs> it is, it's just Pacific Rim, right. but in 16-bit I'm form, on, I'm on, I'm on, in a turn-based a tactical style where you control three mechs there's a board it's essentially like chess there's a grid of uh, something like 16 tiles there's uh, the kaiju keep coming and you have to you, your your mechs have different moves and then you have to position them uh, in a way that doesn't block off part of the map so that they will destroy cities you're protecting cities right um, it's in it's insanely simple but insanely enjoyable. <laughs> I love this game so so much. It's charming. Um, it's you, you can. It's endlessly customizable. It's got the the Candy Crush rewards mm-hmm. mechanic. I, um, I cannot rate this highly enough. And it's a game that I feel like a lot of people may not have played, and you haven't heard no, of it. No, so that's so. Uh, why I'm confident with having it as my favorite game of the year because I want people to play this and I want to recommend it. What's it available on? P- uh, PC, Steam, or uh, was ported to Nintendo Switch very recently. Right, okay, good. Might I suggest a reband? Might I suggest a rebrand? <laughs> okay, because it's such a terrible name? 
mech chess. <laughs> Much better. I would have been in. Because... You would say no more. It's Into the Breach is such an inane and forgettable title. I'm that imagining like a Rainbow Sixy type thing as soon as you said that. But. It's terrible. And not only that, it's so forgettable that <laughs> I myself, when compiling this list, wrote the words Into the Abyss, thinking <laughs> that was the title. And then on the which way is, here... Which is where that title should be. And then on the way here, I decided... Exactly. I decided to Google... Um, the background to the guys that made Into the Abyss and found that that game did not exist and then I th- and then I had this horrible Matrix moment where I was like have I imagined this whole game someone somewhere has just deleted it from the record of your mind you'll never find a copy of it but yes Mech Chess would be Mech Chess <laughs> that's all I need alright Tom give us give us your number one favourite game of the year. it's Red Dead it's Red Dead Redemption yeah it's a two. <laughs> we're not, we're not <laughs> reaching that far back into the app archives. <laughs> it is the 2007 <laughs> game, probably. Um, no, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, absolutely fascinating to me in that it took me... <laughs> sorry, what is happening? Somebody's screaming over there. You're not hearing it on the podcast, but there's... I, I hope not. Um, Red Dead Redemption to to me was a really finely crafted and brilliant story and this is Rockstar who have proved that they can demonstrate you know a life of excess and um, gratuitous violence they they make uh, the Grand Theft Auto games and uh, many other games that have been banned like they've got a, a rich history of just like giving people what they want um, <laughs> what what an interesting business model yeah exactly <laughs> who, who knew that yeah. they would be so successful um, whereas with this they wrote a story that was so uncompromisingly it was someone's vision that they saw through to the end it was a view of the old west that wasn't going to be clean and comfortable and like oh cowboys aren't they great it was had very true to what what i imagine of the time to have actually have been like um and a storyline that turned out to be so you get so invested in it turned out to be so sad Especially if you played the previous games and you knew sort of where where some of it was going, where the old West... It's like the dying days of the West as well. It's sort of industrialization, modernity are sort of closing in and this, this idyllic lifestyle of, like, riding on horseback and, like, holding up, um, you know, banks and stuff like this, the gunslingers. It was on its way out, but you feel a real mournfulness towards it. It is one of the first games that I have felt sad whilst playing, which is which is why I've, I've put it up there as my favourite game is because that's not something that a video game has made me do before like I've certainly felt um, all manner of emotions frustration mostly a lot of <laughs> but this one certainly to feel this kind of like mournfulness especially as you get towards the end and like you know it, it's got a loose decision based series of things to it and you know your, your actions throughout the game will determine what kind of ending that you get but it's, it's ultimately very similar and knowing where it goes then in Red Dead and everything that happens to everyone involved because a lot of the characters cross over uh, it had a real sort of Rogue One effect to it in that I know that's a <laughs> hot topic talking to Dave Gorgory but, um, <laughs> I'm over it certainly uh, playing that and the level of feeling that was injected into something that you didn't necessarily think well, yeah, you, you, hey it's new, Rockstar's new cowboy game huzzah uh, pew, pew, pow 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 and then you play something like that and actually that was their tagline wasn't it (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. it's spelled P Um, (laughs) to get something like that out of it was just so unexpected Um, that's why it's up there great Um, I haven't finished it Um, I did park it yes um, it took me forever to complete. That's like, my despite it being a 2018 game, I didn't complete it until probably until July. five minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why you I was just late. You rushed over here. <laughs> I um, all right. I can't, I I can't fault anything you've said, and I got um, maybe 20 hours in, um, and it's brilliant. Like it's the, no one does open world like Rockstar. No one populates um, games with the level of detail and richness that Rockstar do like the horse takes shit um, it really does that's not I mean <laughs> it's not a euphemism or analogy no the horse literally takes shit that's all you that's need really to know <laughs> about the detail in this game You wa- it's like being in Westworld it's the closest you will yeah, get yeah, to that's really a, experiencing yeah, exactly um, the Wild West and I and it's an incredible realisation and the characters are very well written the voice acting is excellent and the story was very good and the way you describe how it all ties up makes me want to go back and I do intend to go back however 
and I, the same thing happened to me with Red Dead 1 um, which I did eventually complete but I did it in two parts because yeah. I get very bored by the actual gameplay of this game which I find insanely repetitive and um, uninspired There's they've been doing the same thing since Grand Theft Auto 3 which is have a mission here's the mission you have to go to the place and do the thing do the thing yep. and there'll be a gunfight yep. and you're going to go there with this person and you're going to have a nice chat on the way and then you'll get yep. there you'll do a fight it'll uh, it'll go wrong and then oh well that went sour back to camp yes. and then you go back to camp this and then you just do something else and it's the same every single time this is true and this is the problem with binging it I think is that you just you can't do it because you get so worn down by that whereas when if it's a game that you dip in and out of which I, I had to just because of like how, how I play games now where I'll play like for a couple of hours and stuff it's satisfying enough to not get bored of it yeah. but enough to keep coming back whereas if you were to sit down over a weekend and try and put some hours into this you would struggle maybe that's what happened to me I think I just hit a wall um, or also there's you know it is a very well crafted narrative but there are natural lulls in there so yeah. I think maybe I moved camp and then I was like oh, I don't like this new camp I'm out <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do I do intend to revisit and will revisit it um, it's probably when our children are grown up <laughs> <laughs> it's, with a, it's a game with um, many chapters but essentially what are in my mind two acts whereas the first is all of the setup, and then the second is those uh, you know chickens coming home to roost okay that's what alright well we won't talk spoilers here but I, I want to pick your brains after this as yes. to how far <laughs> along I am in that in that two act structure um, alright that's our top five we are running so over yes. that I think uh, we don't have time to go in depth into um, everything else we'd outlaid so I'm just going to list off a load of titles let's do that and I'll nod and go oh yeah uh, so other games I played this year but didn't make the, the top five cut but which I enjoyed finally caught up on Uncharted 4 well, okay yeah good uh, have you played that yeah I have done yeah. it's very enjoyable I mean that's a lovely looking game yeah, yeah it's, it's like living a movie yeah it's a really a really tight um, short story as well good uh, yeah, just loved it. Um, Hearthstone I played a lot of. Uh, I played Red Dead Redemption 2 earlier this year. I played a game called Baba Is You on the Nintendo Switch. Um, really coming at me with a left field game. Mm. This is a good one. Recommend this. Everyone mm. should just Google Baba Is You. This is a puzzle game which is um, plays with words in a very interesting way. Okay. I, I would be very hard for me to describe what it is, but I've <laughs> never, Google. never played a game like it. Go to Baba, B-A-B-A, is you uh, this is novel and interesting um, I also played Untitled Goose Game uh, quite a lot <laughs> which say so, so no more I mean this, I'm amazed to make the list this game is uh, just outside the list um, this game is a lot of fun it got a lot of attention it went kind of viral didn't it's it it's about a goose being an asshole yeah which they are <laughs> um, and you get to be the asshole but like it, it's so um, you play so much fun just to wander around an English village honking at people <laughs> and upsetting them. Just look, like pre- the first thing you see in this game is press Y to honk. Uh, you don't have enough games where you can do that. <laughs> that's, that's all I needed. Say no more. Uh, you get to flap your wings. You upset people. But it's yeah, it's not. Didn't make my top five because I find the sort of. Um, obscure gameplay mechanics of of that the, the the puzzle nature of like here's a checklist you have to do and you have to make a thing happen but they don't tell you how I find yes. that a little frustrating but anyway it's beautifully designed lovely score it's so funny it's no give it give it a google if you know nothing about it just to get the trailer in your life is enough that <laughs> is, is that, worth seeing that goose is the is should have been Such times douchebag. times person of the year 2019 <laughs> if you hey, ask me yeah <laughs> he is he is all of us um, I also played Octopath Traveler, which is a fun uh, JRPG 16-bit throwback. I think I just play a lot of 16-bit throwback games. You're just stuck in the yeah, 80s, aren't I you? Really the 80s am. and 90s. Um, and that's me. Oh, and also I just started God of War last week. Yes, I too have played a good portion of God of War. It's um, good. It's really good. Yeah. Really tight story from uh, the Sony team there. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, straight away, like... I can see why one game of the year. Uh, yes. Uh, I've... Uh, last year, I should say. That's right, 2018. That's 2018. where we are. We yeah. are years behind everyone else. This is how else. we do. Yeah, we yeah, wait yeah. for the price to come down, then we catch up. <laughs> I can't wait. Two years from now, let's regroup and look at 2019's best game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you my hot picks from 2016. <laughs> All right, Tom, what else did you play? Uh, so, a few things. Um, Borderlands 3. It's just more Borderlands. It's much more tight. Much, yeah. Board- <laughs> Borderlands more. Was that their, their marketing? Yeah. <laughs> you know it. You it's want more, more of it. We're giving you more Borderlands. Um, more lands. 
uh, really tight. They've kind of really refined the gameplay and the multiplayerness of that as well. And they made a way that when you're playing multiplayer, it doesn't matter how, who of you in that party is where in the game. You can all play together, and the levels will be matched, which is something that they struggled with before. Uh, that's good. Which, especially for people who don't have time to put into them, means that it doesn't matter what level you are, you can all play together, which is huge. That's hard to do. That's yeah, impressive. Really, yeah, yeah. They found a mechanic that worked for it, and um, it worked really well, which meant that you can get a party of people together, and whether or not you're playing for an hour a week, or you know, you're one of the people who, who are these six hours a week types. Um, everyone can play together which is huge for a multiplayer game speaking of other multiplayer games The Division 2 which is a real real example of go to the place and do the thing <laughs> That's pretty much every piece of dialogue is agents we need you to go to the place and do the thing which is very tedious and repetitive and I've still not completed it but I played it so there's that um, what else have we got in here um, Civilization 6 Sid Meier's Civ 6 which yeah. is the sort of chess for people who like Settlers of Catan the board game if you've ever played that um, they brought out uh, various expansions recently it's just you, the average game length in that is maybe about four hours so you will play a campaign over, over several days of just this one thing anyway a lot so, of what, what did you play that on? Uh, I played that on PC ah yeah good I was going to say it's available the... on the Switch yes but console uh, yeah I, I saw it on the I Switch but I find like as well. I feel like console ports of like those kind of real yeah, strategy kind games of are a bit iffy, yeah. fiddly and like yeah, yeah I think they, they do work better. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want my <laughs> mouse back in my life. Um, what else do we have? The other big sort of notable mention is No Man's Sky. Oh yeah, you yeah. and me had a lengthy chat about this a couple of years ago. Yes, um, as a game when it came out, it was uh, slammed. I th- Sean Murray, I think the developer was, it was clearly a person who had a vision for a game but didn't have enough time to be able to get it off the ground because Sony put their claws into it like we want this sort of almost near release of the uh, well it was hyped up a lot so much hype and uh, you can see that the pressures that would have been there at the time would have meant that he couldn't get the game that he wanted off the ground everyone hated on it because they were promised one thing and they didn't get it and then in the last couple of years um, they've turned it around it's now the game that he wanted to release uh, that Hello Games wanted to make and it's really good great yeah so if you've got it um, and you've not got rid of it then put it back in update it and play it because it is really worth your time I must get that absolutely um, and that's it for those games I think there's a few notable mentions of things that they didn't play which are probably worth rattling through let's do it yeah so the Outer Worlds Oh yes. yes! Oh my God! I yeah. want to play. That's on my list as well. Desperately, that's yeah. um, the Fallout lot, the original. Lot, I think Bethesda Obsid- is it? No, Obsidian. Oh, Bethesda Obsidian. are making Sorry, the Fallout yeah, yeah. currently, gotcha. but the guys who originally yeah. made the Fallout series have made something which is um, ty- it's apparently quite a shortish game. We're talking twenty to thirty hours oh, short. Yes, he says so. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. manageable. Um, that's only five weeks that. to the average person. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or half a second I, to the entire YouTube population. <laughs> exactly. What I like about that, the look of that game is the the art style of it. It's that fun. They've just pumped some color back into it, like the washed yeah. out colorness of um, the sort Fallout of gears of war. Yeah, yeah, like that is. It's your, starting your, to sneak your blacks back and in. your browns and your greys. Yeah, 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 exactly. But no, they've made a game full of life, which is huge. Um, Death Stranding is out at the moment. I'm, I know I'm getting it for Christmas. That's on my list. That, as well. that feels like a real a warming Christmas hoot. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> so we'll see about that. Well, you're going to have a fun Christmas. <laughs> Isn't that, I mean, talking about the length of games, I've read that that's basically 80 hours of delivering an Amazon package. <laughs> it's a fetch quest. Yeah, it's yeah, fetch yeah. quest the game. Sounds awful. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've got to know. I need to know why it was a AAA game. <laughs> well, people love it, right? Yeah. It's getting insanely good reviews, while also they're all acknowledging that it's incredibly tedious, <laughs> yeah. which is it's baffling to me. Atmospheric and story yeah. heavy when you get to the story. That's right, what okay. I'm told, so we'll see. I, I don't have time for that. Nope. No, thank you. I'll you know I'll get on. <laughs> right I'll live it through you <laughs> um, Metro Exodus oh I loved I played um, one of the Metro games a few years ago yeah. they're great lovely, it feels like a very satisfying first person world. yeah yeah great bit of yeah. world building in that be keen to play that at some point um, Days Gone didn't get all the best reviews that they wanted to but this was the real point at which games realised that the horde mode of zombies where they could actually render a horde of people coming at you so yeah. that's got to be worth a look in um, Anthem which was Bioware's follow up to the Mass Effect series after that sort of died a bit after Andromeda that's received a lot of love um, and the other thing I've got on the list here is Pokemon Sword and Shield oh, I basically have the same list as you <laughs> um, the few other ones I had I had I had all of those things 
Um, also, Control. Yes, Control. It's supposed I to be amazing. The list there. Halfway through this, I remember Control was the thing. That's um, Remedy Games, is the name? Or, or Sorry, whoever the guys are, I've forgotten who made Max Payne mm. and Alan... Uh, Alan Wake. Wake. Uh, I love those games. Great atmospheric. Uh, didn't play Quantum Break. No, I didn't either. Um, but that looked like a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, but they, they, yeah, these guys do narrative very well. Apparently this is amazing. I'm, I'm very excited for that. Um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is supposed to be actually quite good even though yes, I'm kind of, of in and out of love of Star Wars games I, that um, feels like a, very much a game that I know will at some point plummet in price <laughs> yeah exactly single player games you can rely that they will plummet in price eventually so that's it is pick it up waiting, pick it up yeah. for 10 quid a year from now um <laughs> Yeah, I had Death Stranding in the Outer Worlds. Fire Emblem Three Houses looks like something I want to play. Okay, know very little about it, but... Um, yeah, me neither. It yeah. just looks like something I want to play. <laughs> also, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, uh, which is the remake of the old Game Boy game, which I used to have and loved and haven't played yet. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, you mm-hmm. mentioned. And Luigi's Mansion 3. Yes. Yes, yes. please. All of, all of the Nintendo stuff. I love, like love, Nintendo love. stuff. Hey, you, is, yeah. To your point earlier, there's a lot of reasons to love it. Um... I suppose the only other thing I probably should mention is Apex Legends, which was the sort of first-person answer to the Fortnite model. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is uh, I don't know anything done very about well that. this year. Well, yeah, worth a play, and it's yeah. free, so, you know, why not? <laughs> because I don't have time. <laughs> it may be free for the monies, but yes. I don't have the time. It costs <laughs> it costs time. rich time for. Um, right, let's finish off with a quick look ahead to 2020 yeah. and what we're excited let's, let's about let's do a, a, <laughs> a quick fire series of bullet points on this I, I'd imagine we have the same list let's, uh, let me talk you through it Bioshock there's more Bioshock planned is that next year though or not, is that maybe not next year well, but I'm this is coming up very excited about, about that it. <laughs> yeah. which is going to be huge um, Cyberpunk oh this is top of my list yes now we talked about The Witcher mm-hmm. it's the same developer mm-hmm. it's bloody steampunk uh, no it's not steampunk it's cyberpunk um, <laughs> it's uh, set in the future Keanu Reeves is Keanu in Reeves this is in it. man this is a big deal that was one of the, the most exciting things of the year when he just walked out on stage I and didn't was know I was excited for it until I saw it best he of was time. loving life he was loving life he was very happy uh, was that like? game I've I've, I've, I've contributed to those 50 million hours of YouTube videos by just consuming every <laughs> minute that uh, the studio has put out Project Red isn't it yes. uh, about this game it looks incredible. I cannot wait. Yep. This is my most anticipated the game. Next sort year. of dying age of uh, consoles. Though all the new consoles have been announced, they'll be coming out next year, which means we're, these consoles are currently in their twilight, which is typically when the best games come out. So yes, this is true. Very exciting. Yeah. All right. Um, well, what else have we got? Last of Us Two. Yeah. Look, you have the same exact list as me. Um, yep. 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 <laughs> that's <laughs> second. Literally the same. That's thing. that was that's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, beautiful story. Um, I don't really see how you can do more of it because uh, it had such a neat ending but from what I've seen it looks incredible there's some open fun it. parallels to be led between The Last of Us and God of War and Sony games that they're making generally because they are essentially escort missions <laughs> oh yes good point yes. yeah with yeah the, yeah with the kid yeah but much better than the Resident Evil 4 <laughs> escort <laughs> mission in which you yes, had to accompany a, uh, the, the president's daughter <laughs> who was essentially a broken person <laughs> and I don't mean in that she was emotionally broken she was not able to move her body correctly <laughs> in a situation in which you need to be able to move your body um don't know whether or not it'll be next year or the year after, but hopefully more news on the new Elder Scrolls and um, Bethesda's mm. other offering, Starfield. Oh, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, so it's like a space faring uh, <gasps> Hello. Yeah, kind of. The, the people who bought us um, all of the Elder Scrolls games and the Fallout games are now doing something space faring. Space Skyrim? I feel like. <laughs> space Skyrim. I feel like it's going to be there. Interstellar. <laughs> That's the best analogy I can come up with for so it. So it's going to be a lot of philosophizing <laughs> in a bookshelf? <laughs> and surprise that Damon. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can have surprise Keanu Reeves, we can have surprise <laughs> yeah, exactly. Matt Damon. <laughs> um, also on here, more Age of Empires. Is there? Age of Empires 4 is uh, oh, wow. a trail for that, and I believe it's due to be released next year. Okay, fine. That's huge. No, have a quick Google of that. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, more Half-Life. Yeah, oh my god, this yep. looks incredible. It's this a VR is the thing, offering, isn't it? Yeah, it's only VR. Mm. Um, because, um, what are they called? Valve are, have their own VR hardware that they're pushing. Uh, yes. So it's a, I think it, um, this is sort of pushing that. But this, the second this trailer was dropped, I'm so excited about this that I instantly started um, Googling for like high end gaming PCs and VR oh, rigs. No, yeah, See it's a slippery 15, slope. 000, I know. 15, 000, a lot of money to play one game, 
that I haven't told Cathy I'm even considering yet. <laughs> so that she's probably, thankfully, she'll never listen to this. So we'll never know until it's a very expensive thing shows up in our house. And she says, how much does that cost? <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, and then put on a headset and then ignore and then ignore her for the rest of my life. <laughs> very Black Mirror at this point, isn't it? Um, I think that's going to be big. Like with the next round of consoles, hopefully they're going to make VR more accessible because yeah. VR games are great. But the graphics at the moment, the hardware required is too much and the headsets aren't offering high enough resolution unless you're willing to pay literally thousands upon thousands of pounds. So... That I'm excited. It's, it's kind of we're a few years off from this yeah, being but we, accessible. Like, it's right? going to be massive yeah. when it is. Um, I've got a bunch of other things I'm sort of more interested to hear than anything. Um, I'm hearing there's going to be more Overwatch. There's an Overwatch sequel uh, coming, which is hugely popular. More Metroid. Oh, yeah, I've got that. Mm-hmm. Metroid Prime 4. Cannot yes. wait. Uh, there's also more Halo. More, yes, I'm very excited for that yeah, as well. It, it I looks, love Halo. Yeah, I, really enjoyable games. Um, more Diablo. Mm. Here's the interesting thing. All of these are more. This is... Remakes, remakes yeah where's the new reboots, stuff yeah so but then the new stuff doesn't get the press you know that's that why it's true although that said um something I, i've literally saw a trailer for today ghosts of tashima have you seen this oh i did this looks interesting it's yeah. the samurai thing exactly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah kind of i saw a dude on a river just yeah. ripping into people it looks really good and yeah. sort of like something that has been explored in some ways but maybe hasn't necessarily been as accessible as this at this point so it will be I, interesting to see. i am okay with being a samurai with a sword if you if you have to if, 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 if you, you insist to, if, if the men came <laughs> you'd, uh, you'd do it um, right, well, I'll see you um, probably three to four years from now when we finally caught up on those games. <laughs> <laughs> the year is 2025, and here are my <laughs> hot picks from 2020. All right, uh, Tom, thanks for coming. This was, uh, this was a lot of fun. Yes, I hope everyone... Uh, thank you for having me. It's, yeah. uh, it's been a, a joy to talk <laughs> to uh, Wax Lyrical about the nerdy stuff. <laughs> and Wax we did. Yeah, Wax if we you, did. Um, please let us know. Genuinely interested if uh, anyone is listening to this, because... Uh, this isn't our normal chat on the cinema. This is a bit of an experiment. So if uh, if you guys are interested in how many of you are gamers, uh, let us know. You can chat to us at The Cinema on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or email us, thecinemile at gmail.com. You can tweet Tom at, you can, at T. Silcock. T. Silcock, that's me. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so yeah get in touch yeah, and, and thanks for listening by all means let us know um, what we've missed where we're wrong and the gems of, yes. uh, of the last year that we definitely should have no, we're not wrong yeah. but let us know, let us know your list yeah. tell me why let I'm wrong about my opinions. favourite <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right thanks Tom thanks, thanks everyone ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hey, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Ben Holderness. We host the Holderness Family Podcast every Tuesday. You may know us from the silly videos that we make online. Or a book about marriage called Everybody Fights. Or as winners of season 33 of The Amazing Race. Still can't believe that happened. Listen, we do a lot of stuff, but our podcast is our most favorite thing. Yeah, because every week we get to sit down face-to-face, talk to each other about marriage, family, mental health, or just anything that we want to know more about. Sometimes we have expert interviews, sometimes it's just us, but our goal is to bring some joy and laughter into your your life every week. Our other goal is that maybe you will learn something as well. Right. So search the Holderness Family Podcast and check out our most recent episodes. We have one about staying organized with creators of the Home Edit. And one about being diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. We hope you'll join us. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com. <laughs>